Welcome to today's Tuesday topic. Today's topic is Developing Search Strategies Part 2 uh, with our uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Yoka Brat. So without any further ado, let me throw it over to you, Yoka, and let's get started. Great. Thank you so much. So um, for those of you who didn't watch the recording yet or didn't attend um, the, the first workshop, uh, I just want to uh, clarify that we are not going to do a repeat of workshop number one. Workshop number one was me mostly lecturing on why it's important to do comprehensive search strategies and then how to build them. But um, we did not have enough time to get to students. I mean, we did get time to some students' questions, but we didn't get time. Um, we didn't have time for students to try this and build this and get some feedback. So we thought it would be a good idea to do a follow-up um, uh, Kelly, since you weren't able uh, to attend the last one, I am going to demonstrate first in Medline and then in PsycInfo, if you think. So hopefully that will help you. And then as I work with the two of you around building some search strategies, then I can definitely offer some additional explanation. It will depend on if more people join us or not. If not, then the two of you will get a lot of personalized attention. And so we'll be able to make a lot of progress. So uh, just to summarize, though, the reason why we did the first workshop and now this one is because it's so important to have a comprehensive search strategy. As you may have read in the description of the original workshop, a lot of students um, I learned uh, over many years, uh, master's and PhD students really rely too much on purely Boolean searches. So, you know, a key term and then combine that with and or 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 not, and then another key term. And while that's certainly a very good initial strategy, it is not a comprehensive search strategy, as I will show you. You will miss a lot of important references. And it typically results in a lot of wasted time because what a lot of students do is do one search combining cert certain search terms. So let's say uh, in your case, Bani, art therapy and burn and pain, for example. And let's say you get 25 results because there's not a lot of art therapy literature in this. And then you say, oh, maybe I should actually look for art and burn and pain. And now you get 62 results. Well, I bet you that, of course, in those 62 results, are what uh, the 25 studies that you found in your initial search are going to be included in that second search as well. So now you are reviewing a lot of duplicate um, studies. In your case, not a lot of uh, literature on the topic, so not, not that much of a time consumer, but in um, a, a topic where there's thousands of publications that can waste a lot, a lot of students' time. So by building a comprehensive search strategy, you'll hopefully be able to identify more studies or publications that are relevant to your topic and hopefully waste stop wasting time reviewing duplicate uh, information, yeah? And so to convince you how important that is, I thought it would be good for me to demonstrate, which is one example, and I'm, I'm just gonna demonstrate it in Medline, but I promise that we'll get to PsycInfo, uh, Bonnie. So let me uh, share my screen. All right, so I will say that when I search um, Medline, I don't use PubMed typically. And it's just because the Ovid search database is just allows for um, a more sophisticated um, building of search strategies. So to get to Ovid, you would just go from your university websites under databases, you know, click the O and scroll down, or you can type in Ovid, and then you're here at Ovid Medline. Yeah, so that's how I go to Ovid search. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate a really brief um, search strategy that uses both uh, subject heading, heading terms as well as keyword, I'm sorry, text word uh, terms. So subject headings, as you may know, is kind of the headings that a database use, uses to organize their included articles. So articles that are submitted or that um, um, 
are included in a database of um, certain, in this case, medical journals, for example, but not exclusively medical journals. Um, the new, newly accepted articles get submitted to this database, and then there will be assigned a subject heading that is unique to that database. So the OVID subject, the Medline subject headings are therefore not the same as subject headings in PsycInfo, for example. Yeah, so, and, and you'll see that in a moment. Um, so we absolutely want to use subject headings to search because those are standardized key terms. So articles are assigned, um, you know, a subject heading and, and often multiple subject headings. So an art therapy article would be assigned an art therapy subject heading, for example. And then if your article is about burn patients, it would also be assigned a burns kind of sub subject heading, as you will see in a moment. Um, Kelly, can I ask you what, if Kelly is still with us, yeah, what your uh, area of research is? Or what you think it, it will be? Sorry, I was trying to find my mute. No um, I'm currently a Drexel graduate student, so um, I'm not in the process of any research, so I'm just here observing for today. <laughs> Good. And do you, but do you have any interest areas? What uh, what in what program are you, student? Um, I'm in nursing education. Um, okay. I'd say uh, like simulation is definitely an area of interest. Okay. So just just so I have an idea. Yeah. All right. So you want to use subject headings. Uh, that's definitely a great way for using what they call kind of standardized terminology. Um, because sometimes you may think that your key term that you're going to use is perfect and it's actually not recognized by the database and the article may not have used it. So if the article used a slightly different term and your article is not organized, you know, as in terms of subject headings by the key term that you use, then you would miss that article. Yeah. So subject headings, standardized kind of vocabulary of a database, great idea to use. However, uh, research shows that a lot of articles, well, a lot, a, a decent percent, percentage of articles that get cataloged in databases do not always get cataloged correctly in terms of these subject headings. Yeah. And so then you may miss articles like that as well. In addition, there, uh, these databases take um, a little bit of time, bureaucracy, bureauc uh, you know, administrative work before a new subject heading gets added. So if you're doing research in a very new area, right, or um, I'm thinking now with a lot of literature being added around DEI, certain DEI terms may not be included yet in a subject heading, let's say in, in PsycInfo. And so these articles wouldn't be categorized under those subject headings yet. So then it's really good to also use text word searching because the text word would most likely be used at least in the abstract. Yeah. So you would be able to find an article that hasn't been cataloged yet, but you have, you know, a text word that you think should be present in the abstract for a, an article on a particular topic. In addition, the text word searching will help you find articles that may not have been categorized correctly. Yeah, so a combination of text word searching and subject heading searching is always recommended. And I'm going to demonstrate just, I'm just showing a really brief strategy. It's not extensive and I'm sure it's missing a lot of search terms and a lot of um, subject headings that might be relevant, but it's just to make a point um, quickly, uh, if I may. So I clicked on advanced um, search and I want to look for articles related to music therapy and uh, stroke rehabilitation or brain injury rehabilitation. Yeah. So I'm going to add music and I want to first look for subject heading searches. Yeah. Music, I know, is a subject heading in, in Medline. And so if I know that something is a subject heading, you can just add a slash to it. And again, the original workshop, uh, Kelly shows all that, and I have that all in a PowerPoint. So uh, Darren will make sure to share that with you. Yeah. So I search for music and I get 16 plus uh, 
16,000 plus results. Again, this is subject heading, not, not keyword searching, not text word searching. Yeah. I want to actually look for music therapy articles, but I know that a lot of music therapy articles actually don't get always classified correctly under music therapy. So they may be classified under music, not music therapy. So when I look for music therapy articles, I always look for both. Yeah. Um, and I'm still going to use a slash. I know this is a subject heading and I'll show you in a moment when we get to the stroke terms, how to find what is actually a correct subject heading. So I'm just going to hit search here. Yeah. And so, like I said, I don't want to only include subject heading searches, right? So I also want to include music as a text word. I do so much searching in Ovid that I know these extensions, but if you don't know what the extensions are, this means text word. I could also look for music only in the abstract, then it will only look for that term in the abstract. When you put TW, it would look for that term anywhere in the text. Yeah, so that is really broadening the scope. If I get too many results, I might go back and edit my search strategy and say, let me just include music in the abstract so that I don't get articles that somewhere once mention music, but they're really not about music, for example. Yeah. But to begin with, I like to use a broad strategy and just include it um, as a text word. Again, every database on the help button will be able to show you their syntax. It's not the same for every database, right? So TW or dot TW at the end of a word is what Ovid uses, and you'll see in Psych Info, it's going to be a little different. Okay, so I'm going to search that. I could probably search for more things, songwriting, other terms, but I'm going to keep it uh, just concise. Once I am happy with the kind of terms that I looked for around my intervention, I'm going to combine these. And you can do that by selecting all of them and clicking OR or you can type in your text box below one or two or three, yeah? So we're gonna click on or, not on end, please, because I don't need the articles to fulfill each of these criteria. If they fulfill one of these criteria, they should be included, yeah? All right, now I want to look for stroke and head injury related terms. So now let's look, how to find, um, yeah, how, I'll show you how to find if this is actually a subject heading. Yeah, so you're going to do map to subject heading and we're going to do search. And what will open up next is a uh, your, your hierarchy of subject headings related to this word. So, of course, stroke is uh, a subject heading. Yeah. If you um, want to explode, meaning you want to include anything that could be categorized under stroke in terms of subject headings, you would select explode. So if I click here on stroke, you will see all the things that are included under stroke, brain infarction, you know, uh, um, hemorrhage as well as um, an a, a ischemic stroke. If I click, click explode here, all of these will be included, meaning any article that was categorized under, for example, specifically brain infarction will still be included. If you don't click, click explode, then only articles that were specifically categorized as stroke will be included. So it could be that a brain infarction article for some reason did not get categorized under stroke, it would not be included. Yeah, so I highly recommend that if you have subcategories here that you uh, select explode. And then if we continue, you'll see this uh, little abbreviation here, EXP stroke slash. So that is something just as a time saver for you to remember. You just type the next time exp stroke slash, and you know that that's going to be uh, including all of the stroke uh, sub uh, headings. Yeah. So now let's look for head injury. So I would just probably think that 
the subject heading is head injury. But I want to show you how important it is to do this map to subject headings if you're not familiar yet with the subject headings within this particular uh, search platform, such as Ovid. Yeah. So I'm going to search, and I actually know that um, head injury might uh, not be the correct term. It, uh, or brain injury in a singular is not the correct term. It's actually brain injuries. But if I include brain injuries only, that's actually a lot of them, you see, right? But I might be missing articles that specifically talk about coma or are categorized as coma or post-head injuries. Again, if I explode, it will include all of these articles, yeah? Okay. So we just exploded um, all of those, and now I want to do some text word searching. And Bonnie, will we see how how good your memory is from um, uh, reviewing the the PowerPoint? So I'm just going to start typing something, and then I'll explain what why I did what I did. Maybe I should make sure I don't have typos, injure, or drama. And I'm just going to be looking for that in the abstract. All right, let's review this kind of more complicated uh, string of words here. Bonnie, do you remember what the AD, yeah. ADJ? Yeah, basically, uh, if you're looking for these two terms together, like head injury or head brain trauma, so we want all combinations, permutations and combinations to it. So it just means that it's head or brain adjacent to something that might be injury, injuries or trauma in the abstract. Yeah, exactly. And the number two means within two words. So I want head or brain mentioned within two words of injury, injuries or trauma. Yeah, uh, I could probably even do trauma with a dollar sign. The dollar sign is an extension, so it could be traumas, for example, or injury, injuries. Yeah, so any combination, head within two words of injury or head within two words of trauma and so on. Yeah, so this is a really quick way to have all these combinations in your search rather than typing in head injury, dollar sign, enter and wait. And then brain injury and weight, you know, it just saves a lot of time to be able to do it uh, this way. And then when I hit search, you know, we'll get a bunch of uh, results. Oops, why did that not work? Just make sure it didn't. Oh, I did something wrong. I probably missed the bracket somewhere. Yes. So did you see it didn't want to go? So brackets are extreme, or what do you call them? Not brackets, uh, parentheses are really important. Because I have a double parenthesis at the end here, it doesn't know what to do with that because I forgot my parentheses in the beginning, yeah? So now it's gonna be clear, I want in the abstract anything between my outer parentheses, which is this combination of these words adjacent to any of these words. Yeah, so let's see if it wants to do it now. And that worked. So I'm going to do one more uh, text word search. I also think I should be looking for stroke or cardiovascular uh, accident or CBA, for example, because an abbrevi abbreviation may be used. Again, there's. I, I'm not an expert in this area. I'm sure there's other text work searches, but I just want to uh, briefly demonstrate this. Yeah. So now I want to combine all my stroke and head injury related uh, lines. And again, I could do it by clicking all of these and click org. But if you have, let's say, 10 lines, that's a lot of work. So a little shortcut is to do or with a forward slash and I want or lines five through lines eight. Yeah, and now it's going to combine any of those lines to four. Yeah. 
All right. So now let's look. I want all music and music therapy related articles line four, with any of my stroke related, head injury related articles. Line nine. This time I do want to click end because I want both of them to be true for any articles that Medline uh, basically um, uh, spews back at me. All right. So we have 618 articles. Yeah. Not bad. Probably some irrelevant articles because of my music textbook search. But I, again, I wanted to keep it pretty uh, open right now. So what I'm going to do now is, do you have any questions about this search strategy? No, we good. All right. I want to demonstrate now just briefly what happens if you only do your subject heading searches. So I'm going to delete these for a moment. not gonna want to do it let's see i was hoping i could do yes 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 i do want dependent things removed okay so i now only have my subject heading searches i still need to combine these two lines but or i need to combine stroke related lines with or yeah and now i'm going to combine my music lines with my stroke and injury related lines with an end. And let's see how many we have. 309. So if I only would have used subject heading searches, I would only I would have gotten half of the results. Yes. Now let's look for even worse. So let's remove all of this. So most students do keyword searches, right? So let's do a keyword search of uh, music. And uh, let me see here. Actually, I'm going to even bring us back a step. I see a lot of students, when I ask students to show me their search strategy, they don't even go to the advanced search. They just go to the basic search and they'll put in music and maybe they'll say, okay, include related terms. Yes, yeah, so I will do music. I'm going to do music therapy. And let's say they also search for stroke or brain injury. So I'm just going to put it. I already pre typed it, so it's a little faster. Include related terms. All right. So they did all their text word searching. And now they may not even combine, but let's say they um, know to combine. And then it's giving me a little hesitation here. So let's say we combine one or two. And so we have one or two, and we're going to combine it with all our stroke terms. Oops, doesn't allow me to do it this way. Three, four, four. Oh, oh, sorry, not three or four. See what happens when you do <laughs> a wrong Boolean? You get a huge amount of articles. That should be three and four, right? So we want music and stroke or brain injury related. And you got three results. All right. So I hope I convinced you that combining Boolean, that's combining subject heading with text word searching is really important. And then using some of the platform specific um, syntaxes, such as an adjacent term or searching only in text word or searching only in abstract can be um, a time saver, yeah? So let's move to PsycInfo for a moment because Bonnie is hoping to get some more uh, information on PsycInfo. So you can already see that this is set up quite differently, right? So please know that um, it is not per se data, only database specific in terms of how you can search. It's plat platform specific. So here we're no longer using Ovid, we're using EBSCO to search, yeah? Between you and me, I hate EBSCO for searching, but we'll deal with it. Uh, I'm definitely a huge Ovid fan, and Drexel University used to have Ovid for 
like info for Medline. So I was a very happy camper. And then they, well, not that they took that away. Somehow the packaging deal got different and it got more expensive, I assume. So now we only can search psych info using EBSCO. But it is a, a very um, similar kind of way of searching. You want to come be able to combine subject heading searching with um, text word searching. So to stay with the same topic, so just so you kind of see how it looks different in, on a, in a different platform. So let me look um, for music first. And so in EBSCO, you have this drop down field. You can look as a text word, yeah? Or you can look at uh, as subject headings. You will see that they have MA, which means MESH, this is your medical subject heading. So these are the subject headings of Medline, yeah? Um, and the DE are subject headings specific to PsycInfo, yeah? So not all subject headings in your Medline might be the same subject headings in your PsycInfo. You can always look for what are the correct subject headings by clicking here, suggest subject terms. Yeah, and if you click that, it will do something very similar as Medline and suggest to you what the subject terms are. I mean, you could imagine that music would be a subject term, right? So if you click on music, it will tell you what's all included, what broader terms are. We certainly don't want a broader term in this case. We want narrower terms. Uh, but I also don't want just musical instruments, for example. Yeah, so I'm just going to leave it at music. Yeah. And then you can just add that as a search term. And there you have it. Yeah, and so that's your database specific search term. So in uh, PsycInfo, your search terms comes up here with S1. S1 means search line one yeah and so you see for music how many results we have so let me i'm not going to um, go through all of the examples using all the subject headings because it would just take a little bit too much work but you can um, also search for text words and you can do it by clicking this field but of course once you know that tx is what the abbreviation is or the syntax is that they use you can just start typing it in right here. Know that in PsycInfo, the syntax go at the front with no dot, no nothing, yes? So you can just start doing it that way. And so you will see it show up in your search strategy below, yeah? But now to show you that subject headings are not the same across database. So in um, Medline, the subject heading was brain injuries, one of the, the smaller categories under that larger, what was it, cardiovascular or cardio trauma, uh, vascular trauma. So brain injuries is the subject heading in Medline. In PsycInfo, it is brain injury. And it's showing up here because I just uh, quickly ran the search before. Uh, but again, you could type in brain injuries. They suggest search terms and it would show you what is suggested, that it's brain injuries, yeah. And so again, if it's, oh, you, I didn't explode, but just like in Medline, you can choose to explode that as well by selecting the little explode button, yeah. And then you can do the um, same thing in terms of adding and combining. So I prefer not adding and combining up here yet. I really prefer doing it uh, below and saying, okay, now I want my music relating search lines combined with or, and then I want my brain injury. I only have one line here, but let's say you have multiple lines, you would select all your brain injury related lines, connect them with or, and then you would select your music related combined lines with your brain injury combined lines. In this case, I only have one. So I can search with end. And of course, we'll have much less results because I didn't do a comprehensive search. Right? So we only have 47. Okay. 
All right, so that was just a brief demonstration of how to search in both. In both databases, you can then limit your searches, right? So let's go back. I hope my own is still open. Yes, it is still open. Oh, I have my bad search here. I should have saved all my searches. By the way, you can save all of your searches in all of these databases, but you have to log in first, yeah? So I did not tell it to save my previous search strategies, but let's click on, on one that has a little more results so I can show you. So let's say you have all of these 25,000 um, articles displayed and so it's way too much for you. Let's say that is actually your ultimate output of all your combined uh, work. And of course you would never review that many articles. So clearly you're going to have to narrow down and you can choose limits that are um, pre-listed here for you. You can say, for example, I only want the English, English language, yeah? Or I only want articles within the past 10 years because my committee is not gonna wanna see anything older anyway. Uh, there's additional limits that can be super helpful Let's say that you only want children or infant articles or only adults. And so you want all the children articles deleted. You could select adults here and use that as a limiter. You have any other languages that you can select here, particular journals. Maybe you want only articles that were published in The Lancet, for example. Yeah. Um, but another really important one is right here, publication types. Maybe you only want randomized control trials, and then you would just go to the R and you can click randomized control trials. Yeah. Here they know that again, not all, all articles are, are categorized um, uh, correctly because errors happen when articles get classified. So I would suggest that you limit, that you try limit it using this limiter, see what happens, but you can also limit by now combining your output. So let's say we use that more extensive Medline search strategy where we had 600 plus articles. Now I could add search lines and say, search for articles that have um, randomized in the abstract or control group in the abstract or controlled in the abstract, yeah? And then combine all those lines and then you can combine your 600 articles using end with those combined lines so that now you only hopefully will find randomized controlled uh, trials. You can do the same if you're only looking for systematic reviews or review articles, for example. You also have subsets here. So if you only wanna look in cancer or if you only wanna look um, in the last five years. So there's many limiters that you can select yeah, to help you narrow down uh, your search. If your search is still too wide, let's say you still end up with 500 articles and you want it to be narrower. So in this case, I would look at maybe the first 10 or 15 articles and I see that my use of music as a text word really got me in trouble. It brought up a lot of, I mean, probably not, but rock star performance articles, maybe rock stars who had a stroke, I don't know, you know, and I don't want those kind of articles. Then you, when you save a search strategy, you can always go back to it, click on the edit button, and that one line where I had music.text word, TW, I can revise to music.ab. And so that music has to be in the abstract for the article to be pulled, yeah? So I highly recommend logging into a database, saving your data, uh, your searches, and then so that you can go back to it. And one, you can further refine it if need be, or let's say you write your proposal, you have a really good search strategy, you write your proposal, and then when it comes down to, finishing your dissertation, your advisor or your committee member says, you really so should update your search, yeah? Then you do not wanna have to retype that whole search strategy. You do not wanna rerun the whole search strategy. Instead, you can pull up that search strategy and now say, 
only give me articles with, published within the last year. Because you don't want to have to review all 600 articles, right? You only want to once in the last year so that now, you know, maybe 20 new articles were published and now you can look at, okay, are, are these relevant to my dissertation? Should these be included? Yeah. All right, I'm going to stop talking. And I'm going to take your questions and see if maybe we can do a little bit of practice with some search strategies that you would like to try out. But let's first see if people have maybe some just more general questions. Go ahead, Aaron. Uh, Dr. Brack, could you demonstrate how or can we do adjacent terms in PsycInfo? Can we do what? Adjacent terms in PsycInfo? Yes. Yeah, so in PsycInfo, it's they use the, the I think it's they used to uh, use the letter N. And again, you can always go, I'm trying to look at where the help button is. If you click on the help button, you will be able to get all of the explanations for the syntax. But let's look. It used to be an N. So let's see if I, again, I rarely use PsycInfo anymore, but uh, let me see here. So let's do, um, in your case, art therapy uh yeah we don't have to do art therapy or art because if it's finding art it's going to find art therapy of course but let's say and three of what words what what words are you are you interested in combining with um i mean for or, now, or were you thinking about another uh, search where you want to use the n Yes, I do. I do have it built it, so I would like you to just uh, yeah, go ahead and see it. But uh, for example, I'm trying to look for something which is art engagement or oh. arts engagement. Okay, so only art. Oh, art, or art combined with the word com, com, with the word engagement or other words that mean engagement. Sure. Actually, it is receptive art engagement, so it gets a bit complicated. So I know that music therapy has receptive music and receptive, you know, uh, and passive, but we don't. Or there is literature which is like minor and I can't just find it. So I'm trying to find receptive art and receptive arts engagement, which is visual arts. But when I did it in PsycInfo, of course, I used the term arts and art therapy and art, and it gave me music. Uh, receptive music as well so yeah. that's why I wanted to just go through and see you know what yeah so let's see so I think you're gonna have to use it as a text word and so that it doesn't give you a, a, a key term so if you look for key terms and sometimes music studies or music therapy studies may have been classified or categorized or may have given a, a key term either by the authors or by the folks at the database side as you know, uh, oh, art, art therapies that must also include music, right? So, so let's do a text word search okay. of art near maybe three words engagement. So it could be art engagement, or it could be engagement in the arts. So that's indeed that's only two, but let's do three. I'm pretty sure in psych info it's an asterisk. Asterisk for the expansion, not, not the dollar sign. So let's do engagement. And you also want receptive, right? And it needs to be, I'm going to do near five receptive because receptive could be at the front and further away from the word engagement, maybe. I've actually never done a search with two adjacent or two near. So, so let's see if we can actually do this. I, I'm not quite sure. That might be a question for a librarian, how to uh, best do that. But let's do art near engagement, near uh, receptive. And if not, we can look for it as separate uh, terms that we place uh, with near. I would then not select a field, right? Because we already said that we want it as a text word. Let's see if it's willing to do it. Oh, I still have my previous search up here, but only three results. Yeah. So let's look for a moment if you would do text word art near three engagement. Let's look for that first. Oh, no results. 
that is hard to believe because if it um, really, it may be that my asterisk is, is not correct. I do not remember actually. So let's do art near three engagement. All right, that's better. So we have, let's see it, 401. I would have to go to look at the help to remember what my dollar sign equivalent is in, um, in PsycInfo. But now uh, we can just do a little quick around and we can do art near three engagement. And then what up? Oh, no result. So for art alone near engagement, uh, did I look for art alone or arts? It does not want to do it, uh, but that's okay. But for something like this, would you still prefer recommend Ovid? Because there's nothing sort of medical yet here. So I was wondering if PsycInfo would have more research results from this. I don't know. Yeah, so it depends what you look for. That's actually an excellent question. So if you look in Medline, you, I mean, of course, there's tens of thousands of journals included in Medline, but only journals that have been accepted or indexed by Medline. So for example, in the world of music therapy, the Journal of Music Therapy is indexed by Medline, but the journal that I'm editor of, Nordic Journal, has not been indexed yet. And so we're actually submitting, we're trying to resubmit an application for that. It's a, a, a bit of a lengthy process for a journal to be indexed and it need, needs to meet certain criteria. So I don't think that the Journal of Art Therapy is indexed in Medline. Yeah. So that means that you would not find mm -hmm. any articles that have been published in the Journal of Art Therapy. While the Journal of Art Therapy, I assume, is indexed in PsycInfo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it depends what kind of articles that you're hoping to find. But it doesn't hurt you, right, to search in Medline as well, because our therapists for sure publish in medical journals as well. Mm -hmm. And there might be some medical journals that are not included in PsycInfo, actually quite a lot of medical journals that are not included in PsycInfo. And mm -hmm. so you wouldn't find that in your search in PsycInfo. That is why when you see um, um, quality rating tools for systematic reviews. So when somebody conducts a systematic review, one of the important quality criteria is that the author searched at least two major databases mm. and not just one so that they don't miss articles. Right. Yeah. All right, other questions? So can I just ask here again? So we included in um, Neo3 when we included receptive, right? So oh yeah, is it okay if I just quickly share screen? I was trying to yep. do them all separate and then combine. So combine, that, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good uh, But strategy. I got too many results. I don't know if that is how can yeah, I like, and... focus it more? Yeah, go ahead and share. So I don't know if this is, uh, so I'll tell you what we are trying to do. Basically, in, in one of the sessions, I'm trying to focus on receptive art therapy, where um, at the bedside, I think that be because if the patient is not able to create art, I want to bring in and re see what already has been written on receptive visual art um, at the bedside and also offer it as an intervention. But before I develop mine, I want to see what's out there. So a lot of aesthetic papers are talking about receptive engagement. So I included as I guess search, just search terms, but then I was trying to make it text specific for receptive or receptive engagement or passive. I don't know if this is correct or not. So correct me if I'm wrong, if this was um, yeah. too specific or mm -mm. too broad. So no, I mean, what you did is correct. So you look for text word uh, searching, but with the search line one, yeah. you did not specifically look for subject headings or text words. So I would right. do that or, um, but the best way to understand why you're getting so many results is so at first look, it looks fine, right? You look for arts related mm. um, searches. You did get 136,000, but um you, and then you looked for uh, receptive and receptive engagement, kind of. Just so you know, when your first two there, text word receptive, 
or text word receptive engagement does not quite make sense because unless you um, don't you don't want articles that are about receptive and do not include engagement you may not need to text word just receptive like it is truly about engagement it okay. could mean that receptive engagement is too focused and that that, that is causing some issues or, or make you miss some articles. So it may be then better to only use receptive. So think carefully when oh, you have okay. when you uh, include both, if it's needed or not. But what I'm suspecting is that it's your S1 line that is causing the trouble with giving right. you way too many articles. And so if you can scroll down for a moment so we can look at your search results. Yes. OK, so the first one, few shots. Few shot object detection for headdress and seeds in, you know, probably is not relevant at all. Yes. But if you can see in terms of subject headings, yeah. because it includes painting, it was included as an art, right? But by clicking then on the abstract, you might get a better sense of what these articles are about and why or why not they may be relevant to you. Yeah. So this might be just about general arts practices, but not right. anything related to art therapy. Right. The same is going to happen with your aesthetics, you know, aesthetics and receptive. Oh, my goodness. Now, of course, you're going to get music articles because yeah. aesthetics is music and dance and drama and, and yeah. theater and anything nature. Right. So you're going to get a lot, a lot of irrelevant articles. So I think you're as one line. You're, I would not start with including all of those words as one, because now by, by including them all in one search line, now you cannot say, oh, let me unselect this one and see what it would look, look like. Yeah. Well, if you had made those all separate search lines and combined okay. them, then you could say, okay, let me not include aesthetics. They can still be here on the search line, but I'm not going to use in my combined line. And let me see if that narrows things down a bit further. Okay. Does that so make try sense? separate search lines and then, and then combine them so that you have a little more power then to unselect things and see see what it looks like. And still you would recommend text uh, adding PX rather than just anything rather than, than this abstract. Yeah, bec but what I would do if if the receptive is that important to you, if you really yeah. only want to look at receptive engagement, mm -hmm. I would first, given that you had over a thousand articles, right? I would mm -hmm. first clean up the search line number one. See now where you end up. Let's say you still have 800 articles. Mm -hmm. I would next start cleaning up that search line number two and maybe look for receptive in the abstract. If it's that important, if it's a major focus of the article, it should be mentioned in the abstract, right? right? right. So maybe search only for uh, abstract. Right. And then I will say, as you find relevant articles, look in the abstract, what are the key terms, you know, important terms that they're using? Maybe they're using terms different than receptive that you didn't even think about yes using. that's exactly what i'm trying to figure out because it's so new <laughs> yeah exactly exactly okay and my last yeah. question was so if uh i didn't try it because i was too scared but what if i actually eventually want if to know if there is any work done in receptive art engagement uh in the hospital setting so yeah. is it OK if I just add the word hospital or hospital setting or both? Yeah, so I would combine both, but again, make it in two lines, then combine them. And I would do hospital or hospitals. So use the whatever I can for use for syntax for that. Um, and I would search for that as an app, as a text word, as a text because word. a setting may not be mentioned in the abstract. Hmm yeah so hospital yeah so hospital you're going a, a good thing by first looking broader this is clearly too broad you need to narrow down it may still be too broad and now you may want to narrow down by setting but i always recommend to not narrow down by setting from the get-go unless it's super important to your yeah. topic of course because or now you may be missing what did you say or healthcare i was wondering but again i do i think healthcare is more broader than yeah hospital, mm -hmm. but Again, I wasn't sure if healthcare should be one word or sometimes people use it as different words. So should yeah. I use adjacent or different words? 
Yeah. So you can do, again, if you do it as, as separate lines, you okay. have all the freedom. So you can use healthcare, you can healthcare separate, <clears throat> you know, you can then okay. combine them. You can use hospital, you can hospital settings, you can do inpatient care, you, you know, you can right. combine a lot of terms. Okay. All right. I'm mindful of the time. So I want to see, these are great questions, Bonnie. Thank you. So I want to see okay. Dana or... Um, I think Kylie is no longer with us. Uh, Dana, do you have any questions? No, I'm just stalking today. You're just, I was stalking. just Yeah, I was just interested to see what you're going to do with search terms, which is really kind of cool. We usually don't use the end, so that's kind of a different nuance for me. And Bonnie, when you were talking, um, especially when you're talking about hospital environments, I just like did a real quick silly search, you know, on Google, and there's a lot with receptive art, but more as part of a milieu. Yes. So you might want to make sure that you, That's you know, that you point. credit yeah. for that, that because you don't want a milieu type of thing, right? You want it to be intentional, not just part of the overall design. Because yeah. I was like, hmm, I wonder what that would look like. And when I did it, I was getting a lot of environmental stuff, like architecture yeah. articles and stuff like that. Yeah. Although if that is what you are interested in, to see if any environmental art makes an, a difference. So in music therapy, we call it environmental music therapy. So you may want to look for environmental art therapy if anybody has used that yeah. term. So yeah, it's often in the especially when I have too many articles, I click on the abstract of the first 10 or 20 articles and I very quickly begin to see, oh my goodness, there's so many rat studies in here. I clearly need to exclude animal studies or um, so you begin to see uh, wh where you made potentially or art. Uh, it, very often, if you look for art as a text word, it will include articles that have that just thought about the state of the art. Yes, that state I, of the art, on, you know, mm -hmm. and so you don't want that. So then text word searching with the word art is often very problematic. So you probably uh, don't want that. Yeah. So it's a lot of uh, trial and error. Um, I would say definitely look in uh, Medline as well. I, I find the Ovid search database definitely much more user friendly and uh, just much more time efficient to be looking for things. But again, it might not give you uh, what you know. Don't forget to also look in Google Scholar. Yes, definitely. Now for some um, <laughs> articles that, that uh, may not have been indexed yet and maybe another major database. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do have a relatedly very important question. Maybe this mm -hmm. could be another uh, Tuesday topic. Is uh, <laughs> what do you use to maintain um, um, searches so i know you've done some really amazing cochrane work but yeah um, so for example i did a review paper but i used excel um is there something that we should <laughs> be using uh to yeah. maintain these databases and annotate and you know exclude include uh, that is available to yeah. us in excel I think so you can use a reference management software program for that, like EndNote. So I use for um, I have different EndNote databases. Some people have one EndNote database and they have all the subfolders. But I have, for example, for all my chronic related, chronic pain related searches, I have a, a database. And within that, I might have specific search outputs related to maybe particular patients, particular pain etiology, for example, so specific searches that I ran. For my Cochrane's, I organize it per database. So I need to keep all my Medline search output separate from all my PsycInfo search output. So it allows you to organize um, your references. You can, of course, as you know, import them directly into EndNote. It allows you to import a full text if, if a full text is attached with that. And then, uh, so you have it all in one database. Another good software um, that is available, free, I believe, is Covidence, C-O-V-I-D-E-N-C-E. Um, I do not recommend it for data extraction, like for systematic reviews. I've used it for a Cochrane review when it was an absolute disaster. But um, you can you can import again all the full text, all your references in there. You can annotate in your um, um, uh, files. You can tag your files, so you can tag them like all your pediatric burn patients. You can give those articles a tag, so then you can say, only pull up my pediatric burn uh, patient articles. So confidence is, is a neat tool 
to organize your literature, to annotate, to enter certain data that is important for you or certain information that is important to you as connected to a particular article. What do you use, Dana? I usually use EndNote, but I have worked on projects where we used Mendeley um, just because of the other um, researchers on the project, won't, you know, prefer yeah. that as their system. So I find them all kind of similar. It's just a matter of what you're going to put the time in to learn. So mm -hmm. that I think you need to keep in mind that once you learn to use one system to switch between a few can be really confusing. Like Zotero yeah. was the hot thing for a while. Yeah. So and we use Zotero now because it can be shared cloud-based. So right. And so can Mendeley. So and that was that was the benefit when we when I used it with external um researchers, external from Drexel. Yeah. Um, and COV confidence is uh, cloud-based as well. So correct. you can also work with different people awesome. in right. it. Yeah. But you would generally recommend to go through app when we are uh, kind of screening through and pruning through abstract, do it in Ovid and Medline all of them first? Or do you recommend that if suppose I'm including an article, so there's a button there where I can, you know, say add, would you add the same, do you recommend your uh, uh, students to do it imported at the same time? Or like you can do both ways. It depends on how much time you have in the session that you're sitting. So you're in Ovid, you're going through it. However, if you if you lose if you lose internet connection, you might lose some of your select that you've mm -hmm. been doing in Ovid. So it might be better to like import them into a co confidence. They'll be all there, and confidence has actually a particular screening stage. And then you can screen, you can read the article, and you can just say, I want to include it, I want to exclude it. Excluding does not delete it from confidence. It would just be sitting there. But then the next time you can say, I only want to go to all my included um, studies. Mm -hmm. So it kind of depends if you only have an output in, in PsycInfo of 30 articles. I mean, you can quickly scroll through the abstracts sure. and do it. Yeah. So it depends on how sizable and how much time you have. Yeah, makes sense. I know we're at the end of our time, had Darren. Yeah, yeah, for something like stop this recording. Go ahead. For something like that, stop the recording. I can't be too. No, 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 no. Go no. ahead, Dana. But for something like that, and and you're looking through, and it's a very small number of articles, you may find an article that you want to use for something else, but it just isn't germane for the work that you're currently doing. I have kind of like I might call it a trash file, but it's a it's a file like yeah. for net for later, so that I don't have to go back and and look for stuff that I find that I'm interested in but I'm not going to use it right now so that I don't have to worry about that. So you may want to have that too, as you know, something that you use as part of your processing, just a current. Yeah, just the way you I do agree. Things. And in EndNote, you can create a folder. I mean, EndNote creates its own folder trash, but you can yeah. create a folder called undetermined, you know, yeah. for future work, future ideas or great yeah. ideas. And you can put it in there. And in confidence, you can tag it and say, Hey, this is a good one to keep for future. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, definitely use a system. Don't use something like Excel. There's now all the sophisticated software that you can be using. So don't don't use Excel. Yeah, when you said Excel, I'm like, no, that's <laughs> no, no, not no. a good way to do it. No, you will get no you more, will get so no more frustrated. Excel. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Thank it has a purpose and that is not its purpose. <laughs> Yeah, 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 makes sense. Yeah, thank you so much. I will try some of these and and uh, yeah, work on mine as I continue. Yeah, yeah, and Bani, as you you know you you know where my office is. If you yes. have more questions yes. as you develop your psych info search strategy, you want me to take a look at it. I'll be happy to take thank a look you. at it and thank make some you. suggestions. Definitely miss your okay. classes, so I'm gonna knock at your doors. <laughs> yes, yes, very good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Me. All right. Thank well, you. Thanks, everybody. That was thanks, terrific. Darren. Thanks, Yoka. I always learn mm -hmm. a lot every time I have. Yeah, I know. It's all good. It's Thank all good. you. Thanks for attending, Dana. Bye, Bonnie. Later.